Today's episode is something very special. Not only is it the final mock draft of the year, but someone gets a pretty big new nickname. Make sure you subscribe. Foot Clan, now is the time. Fantasy drafts are here, and the Ultimate Draft Kit is going to take you all the way to that fantasy championship. Build the foundation the right way. You need rankings that are proven accurate, grouped in tiers with blurbs on players so that when you're in your draft, you can make the right decision. When deciding between one person and another, you can watch video profiles of over 100 fantasy players and make quick action. It is not too late to get the most out of the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Foot Clan, we're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, are we not? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot at managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. It's an age-old story. Of course. If you like a show with big laughs and a lot of heart, then this is the one you've been looking for. Watch Ted Lasso right now. On the Apple TV app, subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's mock draft time. Me yeah. eight. Hey, hey. <laughs> Got a little shimmy out of Jason over here. Woo! I'm jacked, man. I, or a big shimmy, I should a, say. I was gonna say he Any was, shimmy from Jason is a big shimmy. It's a big shimmy. <laughs> That's why they call Which him the big now shimmy. Your new nickname, <laughs> the big shim. <laughs> the big oh, shimmy. Big shimmy. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was um, shimmy shimmy cocoa pop. That was something. Not the way I like to start my mock drafts, to be honest, but welcome in. It wakes you up. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it wakes you up. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, we welcome you into this Friday episode of the show. It is our final mock draft episode of the off season. So we are very excited. We're each picking in this mock draft, so we're not sharing a team. And uh, I believe Mike is at pick four. That is correct. Jason is at pick one. I'm starting off. I'm not revealing who I'm going to take. The options are honestly endless at your position. They are. They are infinite. And it's really chap in our hides that he's sitting on the 101 here. And we... They want to know, but I'm not not saying. Yeah, the big big shimmy is chap in our hides right now. (laughs) I'm at pick nine. (laughs) I heard uh, (laughs) Judge Giamatti... (laughs) Uh, big fan of the Big Shimmy nickname, Judge. <laughs> oh, I love it. You love it. Okay. J- Jason is he's laughing, but he's also realizing what uh, his uh, future holds on Twitter. Hey, I, I've got thick skin, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now, you used to be, I mean, when you go way back. I just had somebody mention on YouTube. They saw the introduction on YouTube, uh, which you can see at youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Very nice. We are almost at 200,000 subscribers, which oh. is a very arbitrary a benchmark that means everything to us in this present moment. Yes. But they said, why are the Oreos in the intro? Uh, and that yes. really is, we've distanced ourselves from your old double stuff nickname. Yeah. So what do you think of Big Shimmy? Look, it's uh, it's shiny to me. So it's new. It's <laughs> it's nice. And, and I can, and now I've got a power move. I'm in. Give me that Big Shimmy. <laughs> yeah. Not only is a name, it's also a signature it's move. It's also That's a move. Right. That's right. This is... This is incredible. I'm I'm envious. Yeah, and we if can. If you didn't have it, I would be taking the name Big Shimmy, but it's too late. <laughs> yeah, it's, too it's late. already claimed. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Take that, <laughs> fantasy hit man. You have a nickname that we can gift. <laughs> we can gift your nickname. Um, oh, today, this is- well, today is a bad day. <laughs> today. today is- <laughs> was was double stuff ever shiny? Double stuff was very matte. It was no okay, no. no shine on those cookies. Oh, my goodness. Uh, This is a special Friday. Foot Clan Friday. It's like a... Oh, my gosh. It's like a smelling salt. 
I can't get over something being called very matte as opposed to shiny either. This is this is good. It is Foot Clan Friday. That means uh, our weekly giveaway to one of the many wonderful supporters over at jointhefoot.com. This, this week's item from pristineauction.com they're giving away. This is cool. A signed Calvin Ridley jersey. Mm. Ooh. And the winner is, uh, well, their name over on Patreon. Brave Little Stove. I, I see what you did here. This is a little, seems like a play on the Brave Little Toaster. Probably oh. unrelated. <laughs> Probably <laughs> unrelated. This is a stove and it's not the did largest. Did you guys ever see that as a kid? Oh, yeah. This is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Mike does not like appliances that come alive. No, there's just there's a particular scene. If you saw it as a kid, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we appreciate your support over there at jointhefoot.com. Congratulations on the Calvin Ridley jersey. And you can... Uh, Check out some other signed sports memorabilia at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS on your first item. We do have another significant, oh my goodness. meaningful announcement. Hello. What? Is it 200,000 subs? It, Not it yet. Could, it could be. We can we can shoot our shot. Like By the time people oh. listen to this, it could be. But that's not the announcement. Uh, the 2020 Sleeper Bowl is upon us. Let's go. Uh, if you followed it last year, we took home that hashtag Foot Clan title. Oh, that's right. We did win the championship. And uh, I forgot all about our dominant victory. Yes, yes. And we are trying to run it back this year. We're going to be drafting live tomorrow, taking on Juju Smith-Schuster and some other big-name celebrities in the second Sleeper Bowl. I, I'm excited. And that'll be on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook. Um, and that'll be, what, 1 p.m. Eastern, Brooks? Yes, sir. Yeah, go go subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Click the bell. It's it, it, Last year was it was incredible fun. The The draft has all kinds of, of twists and turns and seeing how the, these, you know, like these are, they're not people hosting a fantasy football show seeing how they they draft, making it changes how we have to react. It's it's like us if you want to see us draft in a home league this is what it's like yeah and and you know we could talk through our picks last year we yep. had uh ninja stream sniping us watching yes. watching us talk through our picks and then grabbing our guys uh we could not be stopped no despite that's true. the fact that he did that despite the fact that i mean this this proved that you don't win your league at the draft because we did make the decision to steal Juju from himself. Mm -hmm. Look, when you got a chance. In the first round last year, and we still won the league. It had to be done. So it's possible to troll somebody and win a league, I guess. Is and it's the, 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 best, it's the best way to win. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, if you're ever playing with, you know, one, of, one player. of the players. Yeah. <laughs> uh, follow us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. You'll see the notifications for that on there as well. There is a little bit of news we want to get into before the mock. News and notes from around the league. All right. This was some more bad injury news from Philadelphia. Mm. The Eagles placed left tackle uh, Andre uh, Dillard on injured reserve. Torn biceps ending his season. He was the number 22 pick in last year's draft. They've already lost the right guard. Mike, you talked about this before the show. This is significant. If you're heading into yes. a draft this weekend, is this a difference-making injury to you? It has to at least give you pause. Because, like, losing your left tackle. Yes. Did you just, oh, did Andy you just spill on yourself? Andy, I, I, <laughs> Andy just doused himself. You forgot how to drink? Yeah, I blame Brooks. you got Brooke. a drinking problem. I blame Brooks. This, this, uh, this mug was a little <laughs> like, too slippery. Oh, oh Brooks is Brooks, fun. come on, man. Look. You never want to lose your starting left tackle uh, a week and a half before the season starts. Now they were, I believe that Jason Peters, who they they brought back, he'll go back to left tackle. Let's see if Jason Peters can I would say that he's can he stay healthy. Yeah. Uh, but it it needs to give you pause where Miles Sanders is being drafted. It he is also banged up. His offensive line is banged up. Where I look, I'm usually a pretty risky guy. In the first and second round, I don't I, I I go all out, man. While Jason, his strategy has always been, I am avoiding all risk in the first two in, rounds. in the first two rounds. And look, I'm I'm 
closer to that point now with Miles Sanders of, do I take Josh Jacobs over Miles Sanders? Do I make sure I get Austin Eckler over Miles Sanders? It's it's really a it's, a, it's a it's a little bit of a sketchy situation now. I view it as a tiebreaker for those in the same tier. I already was looking at say Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders as near equals, where I didn't know who to draft. I'm not moving Miles Sanders down and making him a worse player. He's in the same tier he was in, but now it's a tiebreaker of saying, you know, the offensive line matters. Aaron Jones. No, I would still take Miles Sanders over Aaron Jones. But no, Aaron I'm, Jones. I'm Aaron Jones in that camp. In, in that question. Okay. Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. Uh, a little bit lower in the tiers, but Chris Carson. Definitely Miles Sanders. Uh, okay, see, Andy's with me. Uh, it's close. I mean, the Carlos Hyde work and things like that, and I guess I'd probably lean Miles. Okay. I like that that PPR upside. I feel like it's higher with Miles. Sure. But um, Sean McVay came out. Daryl Henderson is expected to be available for week one. Available is not necessarily active. It's certainly not starting. And this could be a quick opportunity for Cam Akers to establish himself. Yes. Cam Akers is... Uh, an exceptionally dynamic player. Love him. Believe that he should be in conversations about rookie breakout. You know, the Jonathan Taylor conversation it, it exists for Cam Akers. We can't just live in a one-year bubble in Los Angeles with the Rams and not recognize just the the power of that offense when it's functioning the right way. They have a great offense that has had a very fantasy relevant running back for the existence of the Sean McVay era. And Jonathan Taylor is being drafted well ahead of Cam Akers. And Jonathan Taylor is not the starter. He's behind Marlon Mack, presumably has to deal with Naeem Hines. Uh, Cam Akers is a value right now in, in, yeah, drafts. I agree. Last bit of news, just because. <laughs> and that was actually the justification for the move. It was just because. Right. The Jets have acquired running back Kalen Balaj. They signed him from the waiver wire? No. No, they could yeah, have. Because we, we had the news that you know Kalen Balaj was going to get cut. Right. Yeah. Everyone knew about it. Yeah, that was... Uh, hold but up. Then, but then hold up. Wait a <laughs> Wait minute. A minute. <laughs> Number two. The Dolphins uh, actually managed to trade him for a conditional draft pick oh, to the Jets. that's good. Well, they were worried that when... Oh, I actually finally get it. Oh, no. Did you figure something out? I genuinely figured it big, out. Big shimmy big breakthrough. <laughs> now, was Kalen Balaj big shimmy breakthrough here? We need that as a drop. Now, was big Kalen Balaj with Adam Gase? I believe that is correct. Yes. So if that's the case, then he knew if he was a free agent, he would never go to the Jets. Kalen oh. Balaj would never sign with the Jets. He's been with Adam Gase before. And they're like, well, I want him. So we got to trade for him. I, I I can't remember who it was. Uh, I'm gonna take a shot. I think it was our our friend on Twitter, Fantasy ADHD. I think maybe you're getting credited for a good joke, but he, someone threw out there that Kalen Balage owes Adam Gase money, <laughs> and this is the only way he's gonna be able to recoup. I there, there have been many a joke. Adam Rank also came out. Yeah, the out. biggest joke of all was when the Jets traded <laughs> a seventh round pick for Kalen Balage. <sighs> Adam what Rank, are you doing? Adam Rank said that Adam Gase pays for free samples at Costco. <laughs> yes. I mean, I I don't I don't have it in front of me, but I'm going to get it in front of me just for the for the fun of it. Kalen Balaj last year, he had a 1.8 yards per carry. Was that on like 20 carries, Andy? No, it was on 74 carries. Oh man, he's good. That seems oh. impossible. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> We're moving on. Uh, anything else we should be talking about in news, Brooks? Anything breaking? Any big shimmy breaking news? Let's mock. <laughs> Let's mock. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. All right, 12-team half PPR. Jason is in the first spot. Mike at the four spot. I'm at the nine spot. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver. One tight end, one flex, one defense, five bench. Pretty standard situation. Jason, you're on the clock, and I know that you're just name I, after name after name you're considering. I here. usually am risk adverse, but I'm going to go nuts this time. Kayla? New head coach, new quarterback. That is risky. I'm risky business. I'm going to take Christian McCaffrey. Should Christian McCaffrey. 
Saquon Barkley goes next. Ezekiel Elliott at 103. All right, and no surprises the fantasy here. hitman is on the clock. All right. This is a tough, tough little It's It definitely is because decision. I have uh, – the pick for me is it's Clyde Edwards-Alaire or Dalvin Cook. Like It's, it's one of those two guys – and what are the emotions going through your head between those picks? Because I, I can feel them. The excitement of Clyde edwards alaire oh. the vague, like, w- you know what Dalvin did, but the last two games and the injuries I, and the contract. I am a dandelion in the wind. I am just <laughs> just back and forth between these two players of, look, I, I, I don't even know what I'm going to do. When, if I'm, if even I'm on right the now. clock. Yeah, I don't know right now. I don't know in a real draft which direction I'm going to go. I will say I have drafted Dalvin Cook a lot in uh, in my real drafts, so I'm just going to take this this particular chance to actually draft Clyde Edwards Alaire. But blam, it is done. Is there any change in the way you approach your draft philosophy from this point forward because of that decision? When you uh, look at those two players, I don't have to prioritize Alexander Madison. Okay, that's true. And so after Mike took Clyde Edwards Alaire at 104. Alvin Kamara at 105, Michael Thomas at 106, Derrick Henry at 107, and Dalvin Cook at 108. Which, it, to give some context to that, so we did our, we're doing our family draft uh, with our kids. We took, Team Wright took Dalvin Cook in the first round, and we were in, I think it was the ninth, and it was, this is Alexander Madison time, and you, the, the, the people at home know my undying love for Antonio Gibson, and it was, oh, crap. I have to pick one. I know one of these players is not going to make it back. I ended up taking Gibson, and then, of course, lo and behold, Jason <laughs> took Alexander Madison. So the big it was, shimmy. <laughs> yeah, I got I got big shimmied in the draft, and oh man, it's so bad. Uh, but it was so it was this decision where all of a sudden my back was against the wall, and it, it, and I knew I was I had to sacrifice getting one of these players because I didn't prioritize them earlier. So it, it saying. When I go Edwards Alaire, I'm avoiding that situation. Am I a psychopath that I don't prioritize Madison the way you guys do with the Cook situation? No, I'm like d- I don't consider that a necessity the way that you guys have talked about it all off season. I, not one time have I thought I have to have Alexander Madison if I get Dalvin Cook because I feel like my season is submarined if Dalvin Cook's hurt. Regardless of that investment, that investment's costing me more and more these days. If and you- last year we didn't get to see Madison all alone. It was it was Mike Boone and. At Madison was banged up, and if you were in a best ball league, I would agree with you in the sense that you you don't get to make all the weekly transactions, and you're not just doing a one on one matchup on a weekly basis. Alexander Madison could get you win after win after win in a one on one matchup. So I I I do personally prioritize it. I worry about that. Cook goes out, split time backfield. You know it's not going to be as good as Cook. That's my concern. I I guess I really believe in the player. Madison. I don't think he's Dalvin Cook, but I think you're getting 85 to 90 percent of Dalvin Cook's production. I wish we would have got to see it last year. Yes, that would have been nice. True. I took Josh Jacobs at 109. Shocker! You're my guy. Yeah, I mean there were other choices: Joe Mixon, Miles Sanders, Aaron Jones in that category. But I'm taking Josh Jacobs. Patrick Mahomes actually went in the first round next, which you know you might roll your eyes out there listening. Don't roll your eyes. This will happen everywhere. Yes. This will happen all over the place. Uh, our family league, two quarterbacks in the first round. It just happens. Somebody has watched the Super Bowl. And uh, so Mahomes, Mixon, Miles Sanders to round out the first round. Aaron Jones, Julio Jones, Devontae Adams. <laughs> Jason's shaking his head. I just I, – I know how – you know, early in the the off season, the the previous mocks we've done, running backs fall even more than they do here. But uh, now, now that real drafts are happening, I mean, these running backs are going to be gone. The ones that I actually want for my running back too. By the time I'm I'm back on the clock at the two twelve. Well, I I'm back on the clock at two oh four right here after two wide receivers went off the board: Julio Jones, Devonte Adams, and I can take a running back. I can go Nick Chubb. I can go Kenyon Drake. Jason's my guy. Big fan of Nick Chubb. I traditionally go two running backs. I'd like to do something a little bit different today. Okay. And I have a very good wide receiver on the board waiting for me at 204. His name is Tyreek Hill. So I'm going to take Tyreek Hill in the second round and see what it's like splitting running back wide receiver today. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, Tyreek is there because the, the running backs are starting to go hot and heavy or earlier and earlier. I think that that will be a very tough decision. Do you do you go, you know, Nick Chubb, who I've I have him, you know, right around that RB one fringe, but meanwhile Tyreek Hill is a top five wide receiver. It's a little bit. It's a, that's a tougher decision. The multiverse uh, situation we brought up earlier in the week, like more of the multiverse. Uh, multiverses have me taking Nick Chubb than than Tyreek, right? Ordinarily, but I'll, I'll go Tyreek Hill. Austin Eckler went next. Nick Chubb, so Eckler ahead of Chubb, and then DeAndre Hopkins and Travis uh, Kelsey. I don't mind it. I have Eckler ranked higher than Nick Chubb. So right now, I am uh, the the available wide receivers: Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay. Really like those guys, but look when you have a when you have a chance. And you're in your draft, and you're looking at your good friend, who has been throwing big shimmies into my face. Yeah, he, you're much closer to those shimmies. Yes, it feels like. I, I mean, and look, my my top he's two angled them at you. My top two running backs on my board are Kenyon Drake mm. and Chris Carson. Oh, Chris Carson, so good. Chris Carson, Chris Carson is excellent. He he absolutely is excellent. But trying to make a grown man cry is also part of fantasy football. I love both of these players equivalent, so I'm taking Kenya Drake. It wasn't enough. <laughs> it wasn't enough to be the big shimmy. You had to take this episode is just squashing you like a bug. That's so my whole goal. Mike starts with Clyde Edwards Alaire and Kenyon Drake drafting in the fourth spot. That's pretty nice. Chris, That's Chris awesome. Godwin yeah, goes happy. next. George Kittle after that. We'll let Jason sit in his tilt as we pause. <laughs> as we pause and thank today's sponsor, we're talking about WGU. If you're ready to earn your degree, uh, but you need a university that works with your schedule, that's what we're talking about with WGU. Their programs were built to be flexible. WGU offers a quality degree program that is affordable, flexible, and makes it possible to graduate faster, which I think is the goal here. Uh, you earn a respected bachelor's or master's for under $8,700 per year. That's with all fees included. And uh, WGU has this figured out. There's no set login times. There's 24-7 access to most coursework. You can earn that respected degree on your own schedule. You can fit that in with whatever else you have going on in life. You can pass most courses as quickly as you master the contents of the course, which again, lets you speed the thing up. Uh, get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. It's wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers for your $65 application fee waived. Foot Clan, don't forget our friends at Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses company. They don't overcharge like the big corporations. They do it differently with polarized shades on a price tag. Look, they're stunners. Right, you throw the shady rays on, you throw the hate blockers on, and people are like, "That that's a classy looking dude." On top of that, the best warranty in all of eyewear. They will replace your shades if they're lost or broken for any reasons. It doesn't matter if you've dropped them in the ocean, Jason I've done and, it. and Brooks. He's been done there. It. Look, maybe you drop them in a lake. Anything. It doesn't matter. They're going to replace maybe a volcano. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> look. I, that's, that's I don't know a, where you're at. That's that's a good point. Maybe you've dropped them into a volcano. It's possible. And, it's actually a really solid point. And your sunglasses are probably the least of your concern <laughs> at that point. But guess what? Shady Rays will, will take care of you. If you they, make it out. They, may, they managed to make quality sunglasses. Like Most Shady Rays are just 48 bucks, and Shady Rays is out there doing good as well. They provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order placed. They've provided over 10 million meals to date. We love Shady Rays. Andy is never caught without a Shady Rays unless he loses the pair, at which point Shady Rays I've is, got backups right is now. going to replace them exclusively for our listeners. The best deal they have to offer, this is a Black Friday-level deal. Use the code FANTASY for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free, BOGO, as it's known in the biz. <laughs> get two pairs of shades for 48 bucks. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com, where you can find all the newest and best shades. That code is FANTASY. All right, all right. Jason, you have got a, you had a couple moments there to calm down. You I have did. Christian this McCaffrey. Is, That's a comfort. That is a comfort, which is necessary. I'm standing at the volcano right now. He this is, is a nice blanket. Um, 
this is worst, absolute worst case scenario for, for me. I did several mock drafts recently, and I would not take the one on one anymore. Wow. Like, the way that drafts yep. are happening now, I can't stand this. Here's the players I dreamed to drop to me. Any one of the running backs of the tier, Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, Nick Chubb, I never thought Drake would make it, but I've had those players drop there. They're not dropping it, there anymore. So it, Chris Carson is not Chris Carson in that is tier for not you? in that tier to mm. me. Um, that's fine. I'll take a Travis Kelsey if he drops, or George Kittle. Both He'll did not at least drop. make it to me. Well, all right, then I will take Chris Godwin. And wait a minute. He didn't Hold drop up. either. This Man. is worst case, uh, but I do know who I'm going to take. Uh, Kenny Galladay, he's got smooth routes. He's a, uh, you know, a, it's the wide receiver seven on my I like board. It. And now I'm stuck with a real hard question, and I know my answer. And before you answer that, Footclan, this is why we talk about mock drafting, because the tilt is real. Like, this is an actual emotion that is happening with the big shimmy right now. Yeah. You don't want to do that in your real draft. You no. need to know, like, you know the players that you wanted to drop to you. You need to have your backup plan for these early rounds ready because a tilt pick in the first round is setting your draft up for devastating but You're chasing it. From then on, yes. you, you realize you make a bad pick. And everything else beyond that point is making up for the bad pick, which means you're making the wrong pick. Right. And I have prepared for this situation. It is worst case scenario, but I have prepared. And when I look at the board and I say, okay, if I take uh, Chris Carson, who to me is another tier down, or Todd Gurley or Leonard Fournette, these these other tier running backs, I'm not going to be able to compete with Mike, who's got Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Kenyon, Drake combo that is better and then gets better picks before I go again. So I'm going to take a difference maker. It is not on brand for us. Wow. I was but going to say, are here, you going to take, you here gonna take in Lamar? the third round, I am taking Lamar Jackson. And I realize all the, but we're late round quarterback. Lamar Jackson is a difference maker okay. that I think will give me uh, an advantage. And if I have the chance to draft him in the third round and I don't like anyone else there as a true difference maker for their position, I would much rather have taken uh, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, uh, or any of those running backs I name, but. I, I'm excited on multiple levels for you having done this. I want to see what happens the rest of the way because you've been so pronounced in your middle round wide receiver mm -hmm. world, but now you've invested on Kenny Galladay and Lamar Jackson. I'm excited because, look, the psychology of fantasy football, you have the best running back in football. You've now potentially secured the best wide receiver. The, the temptation to combine Christian McCaffrey and Lamar Jackson and then figure the rest out I get it. I mean, I, yeah, I'm excited I to watch you figure this out, not me. But it's Christian McCaffrey, Kenny Galladay, Lamar Jackson. After Lamar Jackson, Mike Evans, Odell Beckham went, Mike is on the clock. And this is interesting because I know yeah. Mike is staring at Chris Carson's name, but he has Clyde Edwards, Alaire, and Kenyon Drake. He's in the third round. Is he willing to go through running back here? So this is a two wide receiver, one flex format. That's uh, the, the format that we generally play in. If this was a three wide receiver league, I would 100%. I'd be, I'd be taking DJ Moore here. He's a he's my number seven wide receiver currently. And I know there's a discrepancy of saying, well, I'm going to pass my number seven wide receiver to take my number 12 running back. But leaving the first three rounds with three running backs that I project as RB1s, it's to me is an advantage uh, over everyone else inside of this league. Of uh, things have really opened up here for me. Quarterback, tight end, it doesn't matter. I'm I am set here at running back until I choose to start grabbing some backups. Yeah, that is quite the start, and then you get to put into practice that middle round wide yep. receiver, find the value that you like. I would assume somehow, some way. You end up with uh, DJ Chark on your team. Yeah, I'll probably get. I'll pro <laughs> because I should you almost get, always do. Should get at least one of my my guys here. All right. Uh, yesterday we had a very big discussion. Was it a discussion? I don't know what you would define it as. We talked about Le'Veon Bell, mm. and uh, I received messages on Twitter, basically finding it uh, our conversation, which was a bust show. Jason brought up the name. There was a lot of negative press. Feeling like our discussion was incongruent with our ranking of Le'Veon Bell that is still in the UDK. I told you I don't have him in my top 10 anymore, but I'm looking at options at 
running back here. After Carson went Allen Robinson, Juju, DJ Moore, I was hoping Mike would pass on Carson and he could sneak through. Leonard Fournette, just before me at 308. My running back options, which I would love to secure a running back here, it, it's Le'Veon Bell. That's the decision mm. for me. I mean, there's James Conner. There's Todd I, Gurley. I was going to say, the if if I were you and I'm looking at Lev Bell, Todd Gurley, James Conner, uh, right now in my projections, I might have to update here. I have Connor two spots behind Le'Veon Bell. I think I would be taking the chance per personally on on Connor. Now, so my decision making here is, I believe that there are players that I'm content with alongside Le'Veon Bell at this pick. So, and I don't have a long wait. Like I'm at 309. I got to wait six picks, and then I like Lev Bell, but I would be content with David Johnson or Mark Ingram as my running back too. I think that there's a tier difference at wide receiver here. Okay. And that pick is Amari Cooper for me. So I'm going to take Amari Cooper at 309 and gamble on the return of a running back I'm, I'm happy with. Uh, James Conner went next. Robert Woods, Adam Thielen, Mark Andrews, A.J. Brown, and then David Johnson. So had I well, taken... Well, you, well, well. You I, gambled and won. Had I taken Le'Veon Bell there, it would have been a mistake, but I'm going to take him right here. So I end up with Amari Cooper and Le'Veon Bell. I do not think I have any shot at Amari Cooper if I went Le'Veon Bell in that third round. So, hey, sometimes you win. Yeah, some, the, the, sometimes you gamble, sometimes you win. So I will be looking at my first wide receiver off the board here. Both my my guys are here talking about DJ Chark uh, and Terry McLaurin. Now, uh, Calvin Ridley, Cooper Cup, Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon off the board. Now there's another wide receiver on the board who is one of Jason's my guys. <laughs> so Could. Some of the options. Read them out. So, so Tyler Lockett, that's what I'm talking about, is Jason's my guy. You're going to have a great team, Mike. McLaurin, <laughs> DJ Chark, Metcalf, Sutton, Keenan Allen. That's kind of the, the wide receiver crew that I am looking at. Now, Jason, this is where he is lucky that I grabbed uh, Chris Carson because had I not drafted Chris Carson and, and – <laughs> I was going to ask you, yeah. It would have been really fun to just take another one of Jason's players right in front of him, but like I've, I've been doing it all off season. You know where I'm going. Chark Wing Duck, DJ Chark, Baby Chark, whatever you want to call him. He is now my wide receiver one, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, DJ Chark, you're taking him over Terry McLaurin in all situations? I am. He, okay. is, he is ranked higher for me uh, by a little bit. It's... It's tough. It's it's to me the difference maker is simply a little bit more trust in or a lot a bit more trust in Gardner Minshew than Dwayne Haskins. All right, so you went DJ Chark. You would have gone Lockett. You just didn't want to stack Seahawks. I would. The only reason to do that would be to troll Jason. DJ Chark is much higher in my rankings. Okay, Jonathan Taylor next at four ten. Jason, were you thinking about Jonathan Taylor if he came back to you? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. So when I look at the board, this isn't how, you know, we, if you've listened for a long time, you know, I'm heavy running back early wide receiver in the middle. And then, you know, that's usual, but we stay water and the draft didn't fall to me. This is the situation. If I'm on the one one where I go to a modified zero RB, I have Christian McCaffrey. One of my running backs is locked down. One and a half, really. Sure, but I just have to fill one running back spot by the end of this draft. This is called CMC and chill. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Smith. Exactly. Oh, is, that, is that what he's called? I, that's what I Rated saw on it. Twitter. CMC no. and chill. I, I don't want to take a, a, an injured David Montgomery or a Raheem Mostert type over dominant wide receivers, in my opinion, like Tyler Lockett. Terry McLaurin, Cortland Sutton. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Now, I would normally take Zach Ertz here, but if you go quarterback early, which I've done, do not take a quarterback and a tight end early. You cannot do that unless you're going full zero RB. Um, but no, I that's just going to make my depth at the important positions not good enough. I'm going to take my guy, Tyler Lockett. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. I love that. I'm going to take your guy, Terry McLaurin. That's a great pick. And uh, so That I'm, is a great pick. Uh, thank you. I'm pretty <laughs> happy with the, the, the triad of wide receivers. Galladay, Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin that's is pretty, awesome. That's pretty hot. I've got Christian with McCaffrey. McCaffrey? And Lamar Jackson. All right. Have you perked up? Have you risen out of your I'm kill back, ball? baby. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Big shimmy. Big shimmy time. Um, <laughs> and there's a couple of running backs that I am hopeful could make uh, it back to me that I do like. 
uh, I'll I'll say their names out loud, you know, even though it could obviously let you draft them. But if either Cam Akers or Kareem Hunt could make it back to me, and I would throw Ronald Jones into that mix as well, I'd be super happy with the lineup I have to plug that player into my RB2. So Jason went Lockett McLaurin. Russell Wilson went next at 502. Zach Ertz at 503. Mike back on the clock with a team of uh, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Kenyon Drake, Chris Carson, and DJ Chark. What's your mm. thought process here, Mike? So the, the I'm I'm looking at wide receiver. I would be deciding between Sutton, DK Metcalf, Keenan Allen, or if I want to assess the risk that I feel about my team right now, AJ Green is in the mix for me. I know he's he's back. It's Andy smirks because it brings him joy. Like it's it's funny how uh, perceptively on the show like. It, uh, players get associated with the three of us, and AJ Green is clearly associated with Andy. And I, I only when healthy, only when healthy. And I've I've been there the whole you time. Have, you I'm, have been there. I'm just not as vocal about it. Like AJ Green, but you've said it before. I completely agree with everything that Andy has said. Of AJ Green is an elite player. Please when, c clip that out. When <laughs> just that sentence. I completely agree with everything Andy has said. Period. Uh, AJ Green is an elite player. We haven't seen him not be elite when he's on the field. It's risky business here, though, to to pair him with with DJ Chark. That's true. Uh, uh, if, when I feel s much safer in Metcalf, Cortland Sutton, Keenan Allen, I think does get a, get a bump with uh, with Mike Williams going to be missing some time. Maybe you get off. Oh, I to thought a, you meant with his incredible skills, Keenan Allen and quadriceps. <laughs> Keenan Allen is very good. Uh, I'm going to stick with my board here, though. Right behind Terry McLaurin on... Oh, no, I'm taking DK Metcalf by accident. Oh, man. It, was wait, that a wait, wrong wait, wait. click? Did you really click something? That was, I, was, I clicked on the player, and I thought they would instantly move up to the top of the, the mock draft, but it didn't change the order of them. I meant to take Cortland Sutton. Okay. Right. Do we have the... We don't have the ability to do that I don't know if we have back, the ability to do it. All right, Brooks is shaking his head no. Well, Whatever. We will mentally associate Cortland Sutton. Good thing the word mocks in front of this, yeah. huh? Well, and also here, uh, don't be so quick, to, so fast to just click buttons in your draft, or maybe you end up with two Seahawks when you don't want to do that. Well, that's a shame, Mike. <laughs> T.Y. Hilton. That is unfortunate. Uh, T.Y. Hilton went next. <laughs> that's a shame. <laughs> Uh, well, Andy, Cortland Sutton would be a sensational pick right here. I agree with that. I, I'm excited about Cortland Sutton. T.Y. Hilton, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, Devontae <laughs> Parker. What's What I was smirking at when you brought up A.J. Green's name, Mike, was not so much that you're agreeing with me. It was actually that I was thinking about A.J. Green before your pick, and I was thinking about how I would approach it because ADP-wise, the way people look at him, do I need to take him in the fifth round, or can I do the same gamble I did before? Uh, because there are for your for your short wait to come back for correct the sixth. Yes. yes for for my short wait and my my thought process was uh, I'm gonna wait I'm gonna see what I can get in the fifth round here I'm gonna try to add a little bit of depth to my running back core with some players that I like because I could go you know Cam Akers is an interesting name uh, that I could take here has an opportunity to start and take that gamble in the fifth round Ronald Jones. But also Raheem Mostert, somebody that I've believed in that has been a uh, a breakout candidate for me. So I'm going to take Raheem Mostert and see if I can grab A.J. Green in the sixth. I take Mostert, then Sutton, Waller, Watson, Keenan, Singletary, and Stephon Diggs. You, you did it again. Off the board. So the gamble pays off. Now I have to make the decision here. Hollywood Brown. Or Hollywood! A, or A.J. Mm. Green. And the pick is A.J. Green. I'm taking him here in the sixth round. And I will prepare myself for the hate. I had, I had dreams of Hollywood falling. I, uh, I was very hopeful, but it did not happen. So after AJ, Tom Brady, Michael Gallup, David Montgomery drops to the sixth here. He'll probably go lower than that in your draft. Hollywood Brown there at six oh eight, and then Mike is surveying the board for additional Seahawks that may be available. <laughs> For me to inadvertently yeah, for click you to inadvertently on? click on. Yeah. yeah, let's see if that's possible. Uh, I was I was hoping that one of AJ Green, Michael Gallup, or Hollywood Brown would make it through. Unfortunately, that is not the case. So now we are. Uh, I guess I'm 
I'm still pretty balanced. I think normally I would like to take a wide receiver here, but now we're looking at the tier of Jarvis, Tyler Boyd, Julian Edelman, you know, slot receivers that have to get the volume. I will say that Will Fuller is interesting to me right here. Uh, we, we had a very funny I moment. This. We had a very funny moment in the draft, uh, in our family draft, where I've, I've really, as much as I can, I've turned over all the picks to my son, who's never played fantasy. So he was pining for one of his favorite players, Emmanuel Sanders, in the second round. I had to at least be like, uh, we don't need to do that right, <laughs> right now. Tap the brakes. But one of his fa- favorite players is Fuller V. As, ah. as he calls him because so will fuller v so he knows players <laughs> because of madden and he's not familiar with that's fuller the fifth no oh, so he so he is he's the flying v fuller so v. He, is, he is fuller v <laughs> and now he is apparently the flying v the flying because v. that's what he does the v will fly down the field and now i feel like i have to take him <laughs> It's you not know, a bad I'm talking him up so much. And in what I the said, flying the v. flying V, the reason I hate this <laughs> is because I'm not getting Will Fuller anywhere. I love him, but everybody's starting to buy in to the potential of Will Fuller, which I believe is top 12 potential in Will Fuller. I think it is definitely in the range of outcomes. Look, Watson's going to ball out. Yes, yes, he is. 100%. Someone on that wider... And, Maybe it turns into the, just an equal distribution between the three guys. I don't believe that's going to happen. I think that one of them will rise. Uh, Jason has been more on the Cook side. Andy and I believe in the flying V, which is why I'm going to draft Cam Akers, oh, <laughs> running back for the Los Angeles Rams, because look, the, the tier of wide receivers. I love it, Mike. The tier of wide receivers there, I, no one is like jumping off the page of, I have to get you in. And I'm with you guys that Cam Akers is shaping up into an incredible value. My RB4, yeah. a rookie loaded with talent on a high powered offense. And I don't, and I could, I can sit on Cam Akers and wait a couple of weeks and see if it's actually there. I'm very pleased with that pick. Well, uh, you've, you've got, you know, just initials at wide receiver. That's pretty much all you need, DJ and DK. So going with Cam Akers, I love him as a value right now. Tyler Boyd, Jarvis Landry. Uh, we are going to do some best ball tips at the end of this draft as yes, well. We Jason's on the clock, back-to-back picks. His team is Christian McCaffrey and the rest. Kenny Galladay, Lamar Jackson, Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin. Two picks. Jason, what are you going with? Well, so I was really, really hoping Cam Akers fell to me here. That's where I've I've got him when I'm at the one spot uh, from time to time, but it doesn't always work out. Kareem Hunt, Ronald Jones the second are there. Uh, I'm also looking. Is Ronald Jones I.I.? I, thank you. Ronald <laughs> According Jones. According to your son. <laughs> Ronald Jones, aye. Aye, aye. Um, the, the, the captain. The question for me, I was looking at the same wide receivers you're talking about, except instead of Will Fuller V, I do have Brandon Cooks ahead. I think Brandon Cooks, who has pretty much always been a wide receiver one in fantasy his entire career until last year and now becomes the one for the Houston Texans or mm. has the chance to be. Sure. Uh, I, I love the value of Brandon Cooks. I do like... Um, the running backs here. I, 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 I'm I can't believe hard... you have an auto picks Kareem Hunt here. No, Kareem Hunt is in, so I will, I will pick him. It's just okay. a matter of would I rather have Ronald Jones, I, I, or Brandon <laughs> Cooks here? And when I look at my team, that's what you need to do. And I say, okay, I've got Christian McCaffrey and you need Kareem to look Hunt. At your team. I've got Christian McCaffrey, Kareem Hunt. So that running back two is okay, but not fantastic. I've got Kenny Galladay, Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin. Whew, this is a two. Hot. Running back, two wide receiver, and a flex. If this was two, three, and a flex, or two, two, and two flex, I would go Brandon Cooks. But because it's an even split and my RB2 is okay, not great, I'm going to take Ronald Jones' II, and uh, that will give me a balanced team that I really like with Lamar Jackson still. DeAndre Swift goes next. Carson wins. Mike, you're on the clock. Yeah. Well, that makes the pick pretty easy because I, I was willing to take the flying V there, but Cam Akers <sighs> was too uh, too shiny. I needed to get him. Look, you've, Don't you, worry, Andy, you've you, been gambling and winning this whole I draft. Know. I finally did, you, and I, I got him. Actually, Andy just gambled and won again because now you can take Brandon <laughs> Cook. The Texans wide receiver one. The Texans <laughs> wide receiver one. In our family league, this is the exact round in the exact situation where I did not get Will Fuller, the flying V, and you took him. Directly ahead of me. Josh Allen goes next. Julian Edelman, Marvin Jones, Christian Kirk, 
Running back options on the board right now. I have Lev Bell, Josh Jacobs, Raheem Mostert. I wouldn't mind picking up another uh, running back here, but I'm looking at my options and I'm not. I'm not really thrilled. I mean, J.K. Dobbins is there. That feels like a bet on an Ingram injury more than it does an every week startable player. Uh, you start to get down the list. You have players that I'd like to see. Like I'd I'd like to have them, but I'd like to have them later. You know, uh, Naeem Hines or. Uh, Antonio Gibson or Adrian Peterson or some of those names. I'd rather wait on them. Quarterback options. It's Matt Ryan. It's Drew Brees. <sighs> Wide receiver feels like the pick here, especially when I have AJ Green. And as much as I love him, there is some risk. I'm not going in on Brandon Cooks. He has injury risk as well. Concussion issues, switching teams. I'm going to take Deontay Johnson. I was going to say Deontay Johnson uh, hasn't gotten you know the the love. That he had been getting through the offseason. He's finally back at practice after missing quite a bit of time. It, it, so you, you, you're you you're still in on the Deontay Johnson I sleeper am. love? Yeah, yeah, I am. I think he's uh, a great player, and, and and you have to make – I think everybody's trying to make a bet, at least having some exposure to Big Ben being old Big Ben, and that's right. where I want my exposure there with, with Deontay Johnson. I've got another pick here. Having a hard time. I'm looking at Evan Ingram. With the upside at tight end, Ingram here is very interesting. I in most mock drafts, I mean, I'm not even, in real drafts. I'm not even thinking I'm going to get Ingram because he's you know he's one of those fifth round picks, the sixth round tight ends, and I would much rather take my guy Blake Jarwin at the at the very end. But Evan Ingram here in the eighth feels like a whoever gets him has gotten an incredible value at the tight end position. You talked him into it, did I? Evan Ingram, I took him. I yeah, look, I mean, I, I looked I'm, at. I'm with it. I looked man. at running backs in an, another tough decision. It's like, oh, Tevin Coleman sitting there. Well, I could take Tevin Coleman in the eighth round and have Raheem Mostert, and then be in that old yeah. Mike Davis, Chris Carson, Seattle backfield boat from a couple of years ago. I don't want to do that. John Brown, Tevin Coleman, J.K. Dobbins, Tariq Cohen went next. Mike back on the clock, eighth round. All right. So the wide receivers I would be looking at uh, these. The the safety net, Jamison Crowder, I think he is he's interesting. If it was if this were a PPR league, he would be far more interesting. He probably would have already been drafted. But uh Mike Williams, he's gonna miss time. I I do love Golden Tate, but I think I can probably wait eh, maybe a, even a few more rounds, maybe till the waiver wire. The golden weight. Yes. Uh oh, the golden weight. <laughs> sure. Uh, and we're, we're getting into the position where if I want to get, uh, Antonio Gibson, I do need to draft him. I've, I've got my eye on Jason. I oh yeah. No, you do. If you want him. Uh, you are a turd. Why are you doing this? To Mind me? games begin. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I would be really upset with myself if I didn't get him at this, but look, we're, we're in, we're in Flyerville. We're, we're, you know, soaring at 30,000 feet already. So let's fly. Antonio Gibson, he's on my bench. All righty. Uh, the player that I was hoping... Now got, confess, where, would you have drafted him? He would have been in consideration okay. 100%. Uh, right. the, the player I was eyeballing, hoping gets back to me because I just am in love, love, love with the talent uh, is Jerry Judy. I, I get him pretty much in every... You know, in the later rounds, I'm drafting him ahead of where his ADP is. I don't think he's a good route runner I think he's a great route runner um so I he's in and now I'm contemplating okay do I look at uh, Hayden Hurst he's kind of the last tight end left that I'm confident in volume um people might notice Tyler Higby is on the board that would be more of a Mike belief I mm -hmm. I'm more on Andy's side where I think Higby and Everett are both going to be very involved um and eat into each other's workload at running back, I'm looking at uh, possible options. Carry on Johnson is currently still taking the 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 first team reps as DeAndre Swift has been injured. He's always been someone that I've liked, but I don't know if I'm allowed to draft him anymore after all these years. Any consideration for Zach Moss here, Buffalo rookie running back? No, the the value is certainly there. We talked about you know he's being utilized in camp. He's getting good press and. The combination of possibly being a, a pass catcher and possibly being the goal line yeah, guy means he gets the high value touches. He could absolutely be the surprising good option for fantasy. The truth is, I don't really want Singletary. I don't really want Zach Moss. 
Uh, I know they want to run the ball, but I think that, you know, I'm not sure that the fantasy value is going to come from either guy without an injury to the other. Um, so I'm sitting here and based on everything we just described, I'm going to take a guy who I think is extremely talented, is currently getting all of the first team reps and could very well be the starter through the season who I love. I'm going to carry on. Oh, wow. I okay. didn't even, I, have I archived this drop? <laughs> Okay. All right, Mike, back on the clock, ninth round pick. All right, I was making the jokes on how I can wait on him, but my team is just is full of running backs, and with Chark, Metcalf, Will Fuller, I do have a need for a smash glass wide receiver that I could put in my lineup, and I know he's going to get at least some points. Maybe he would make it back. Maybe he won't. Uh, and just my belief in, in Golden Tate being the top wide receiver option for the Giants. I'm going to draft him right here. Also, for the record, based on talking through carry on and, and the other options there, I 100% would have gone Antonio Gibson. Oof. Then the gamble has won. All right. Mike went Golden Tate. Then uh, Mike Williams, Higby, Ruggs. Uh, I'm going to play the game again. I'm going to play the gamble. I like the value of Drew Brees late, late, late in drafts. He's still on the board at the quarterback position. I don't want him in the ninth. I want to add some running back depth in the I ninth. I want him in the tenth. I want him in the tenth. <laughs> I would have taken him in the ninth. I looked at his name. He, I would have drafted him at my yeah. last pick if I didn't have Lamar Jackson. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the shot, and um, <sighs> I'm gonna go, go three for three. I'm gonna go with Zach Moss over Marlon Mack, over Adrian Ooh. Peterson. Moss arrow pointing up, Marlon Mack arrow pointing down. So I'm gonna take Zach Moss for my running back depth and gamble on Drew Brees making it back to me in the tenth. Snake let's, eyes? Let's find out. Oh, you did it again. Dirty did it again. Dog. Ridiculous. CeeDee Lamb, James White, Philip Lindsay, Darius Slayton, Michael Pittman, Jared Cook, and oh, look at this. Drew Brees in the 10th round. Feeling pretty good. Feeling yeah, pretty good. I, I got the depth I wanted at running back with Zach Moss and got the quarterback I wanted, so hooray. Yeah, that that is that is not bad. I'm looking at the – I know I'm, tr I'm tracking positions to see who has – filled the quarterback slot, and it is 11 of the 12 teams. Certainly someone could take a backup, but that to me that says I don't have to take my quarterback here. I've got my eye. There's still several. Stafford, whoa, Aaron, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is there. Ben Roethlisberger, Goff, who I highlighted yesterday. Cam Newton, who's shaping up to be my favorite late-round quarterback these days. That was the one thing that made me – consider passing on Drew Brees was just trying to get Newton in the next round, but knowing you two wasn't going to happen. Well, I've got Lamar. And this is where I actually cry some tears because the player that I was gambling silently, I didn't even want to mention his name. I didn't want to jinx it. He went right in front of me. Damian, Damian Harris. Damian Harris running back for the New England Patriots. I get it. Playing the game with the New England Patriots, it has burned many – Many a people out there, but to be my final bench player, Damien Harris, who has his drum beat has been just getting deafening over the training camp, even with Sony Michelle back. They're saying Damien Harris is still getting all the work with the ones. He is he looks outstanding. His pass blocking is improved. His pass catching is great. Everything is the arrow is way, way up on Damien Harris. I really wish I could have taken him here. So now I have to change my plan. Uh and you you still need a tight end, a quarterback, and a defense. So this is your I do. final depth piece outside of those positions. Sounds if like you a, don't go. Sounds with like one the of Blake outs coming unless you think you get them later. Yeah. I, oh, I definitely could get, get Blake Jarwin later. That's whenever the best. I please. That's the best part about Blake Jarwin. Honestly, the the difficult decision that, and I think I'm going to have to make it in our family league as well. Look, I love Blake Jarwin. He's a my guy. I believe he's going to break out. But I also have full confidence in Mike Gesicki who is going very late in drafts as well. And in our family league, I think I'm going to have to make that decision. Oh, oh, goodness gracious. But um, at this point, we're looking at you know real upside, guys that can make some noise in week one. I'm going to take another rookie. Apparently, I'm just filling my, my uh, bench with – or my team with rookies. But I'm going to take Jalen Rager, uh, wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles, who could quickly emerge as the number one option. 
All right, Duke Johnson, Keyshawn Vaughn, two picks for Jason, the 10th and 11th round here. Jason, what are you going with? I had, him as, tight a, end. I had him as a breakout option. I'm going to draft Noah Fantastic and uh, see if he can break out. If not, I'll pivot on the waiver wire to a Chris Herndon or a special postman named Dan Arnold. Uh, and then I'm looking at my team here. Uh, you know, I've got Kenny Galladay, Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin, and Jerry Judy, a four-pack of wide receivers that I think is good. Christian McCaffrey, Kareem Hunt, Ronald Jones, Carryon Johnson, four pack of running backs who I think is good. So I'm just looking for the most solid piece out there that could be uh, used on a weekly basis. To me, that's Deshaun Jackson, who could very well be the number one wide yeah, receiver be. for the Eagles. Uh, so that sucks. I was hoping he'd make it back. There you go. I, I am taking the approach of the later Eagle wide receiver. Rager, DJX. Hmm, interesting. Let one go. Take the second one if, if you want to shoot you, your shot. Yeah, you finally came up snake eyes there. And then you took, uh, Mike, you took Cam Newton in I the did. 11th. I did. It, it's the situation of who would I who will I be more upset about missing out on? I don't, I don't think I'm going to miss out on any of the tight ends I want to come back, but Cam Newton, is, he's already in my top 12. I know he's not officially the starter, but uh, I've, I've been to the future. Cam Newton is the starting quarterback for the New England Patriots. All right, I'm going to take a shot here in the 11th round on the player I talked about on yesterday's show. He's a uh, running back for the Indianapolis Colts. Has a great opportunity with Philip like Rivers. It. Had a bit of a discussion with Tags on Twitter about the viability of Naeem Hines in the offense, but I'm going to take Naeem Hines in the 11th. Basically, a dart throw at an Eckler-style value, but getting him in the 11th round. Tony Pollard went next. LaShawn McCoy. Okay, there's a the name. That we hadn't talked about. And then we're coming back with the 12th round pick. Hmm. Hmm. I do. I like LaShawn McCoy as a, as a very, very late round pick. Okay. Okay. Like just, just in case yeah. Ronald Jones, if he messes up and then Bruce Arians just has faith in, in McCoy, especially as a pass catcher and a pass blocker. He could be on the field way more than we believe. All right. I could go Chris Thompson, another sleeper name we brought up here in the 12th round. But I'm going to actually go with uh, Justin Jackson. Justin Jackson is a player that I can see in week one. Does he have a much larger role than fantasy football players are expecting? If not, I can cut him. I can move on. I can use that spot. But if he has that bigger role and we're missing out on him, 12th round value is incredible. So that's my final position pick before defense. Mike, Jason, you got your final pick here. Mike went with Blake. It's time to Jarwin. break out, baby. Let's get it. And Jason, your final pick here before we wrap this thing up is done. Uh, I took Chris Thompson. Okay. Uh, you know, just to add another pass catching depth piece. If running backs get injured, I can throw him in and get some points. Uh, at defense, I believe in the Saints uh, bringing back a ton of the same. Uh, you know, they they've just they had a great defense last year. Their defense has been balling out in camp so far. Okay, that was the end of your. That sentence. was the end of it. All right, all right. Didn't realize it sounded like the middle of a. No sentence. one cares who our defenses are. No, we'll just take some defenses here in the last round, and we'll share our teams on Twitter, and you guys can contribute your thoughts. Uh, Jason, why don't you run back your whole team, Mike, after him, and then I'll I'll run mine back before we get into best ball. Sure, at running back. I've got Christian McCaffrey, Kareem Hunt, Ronald Jones, Carryon Johnson, and Chris Thompson at wide receiver. I have Kenny Galladay, Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin, uh, Jerry Judy. And Deshaun Jackson, and then of course I have Lamar Jackson at the top of uh, my board with Noah Fantastic. All right, I have Drew Brees at quarterback, Josh Jacobs, Lev Bell as my starting running backs, Tyreek Hill, Amari Cooper, Evan Ingram at tight end, flexing with either like Mostert or AJ Green, Deontay Johnson, Zach Moss, Naeem Hines, Justin Jackson, and I went with the Chargers defense, which I am so excited to watch. Yeah, that's not bad with Chris Harris and company. Uh, on that Chargers defense. So that is a mock draft in the books. At quarterback, I have Cam Newton. My running backs are Edwards Alaire, Kenyon Drake, Chris Carson, Cam Akers, Antonio Gibson. At wide receiver, DJ Chark, DK Metcalf, Will Fuller, the Flying V, Gold, oh. Golden Tate, and Jalen Rager. And then uh, the Blake out. Blake Jarwin is my tight end. You always know you had a nice mock draft if you accidentally draft DK Metcalf and if Emilio Estevez <laughs> likes your team. <laughs> Which is certainly the case with Will Fuller. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. 
All right, this is your weekly best ball segment brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you are not a part of the best ball mania, then you have uh, you're not a part of a million dollars worth of potential prizes. Underdogfantasy.com, or you can search for the Underdog Fantasy app. This is the new best ball place to play. You can go find the app on the App Store. My tip for today, uh, this is something that I have seen uh, both Jonathan Bales talk about when it relates to DFS play. I've seen Chris Raybon talk about this when it comes to best ball play. And uh, this is a principle that we apply here just to the way that we run our business, mm-hmm. which is the uh, uh, Pareto principle. Also, some people call that the 80-20 rule. That rule is essentially that uh, 80% of the results come from 20% of the causes. And this is huge. When you are playing best ball, you see this principle carried out in daily life and society. Things like 20% of the criminals commit 80% of the crimes. 20% of all drivers cause 80% of all accidents. 20% of company uh, of company products represent 80% of sales. And in best ball, here's what happens. You're drafting your best ball team. Every player of relevance is going to be drafted across the entire best ball draft. And because you aren't setting a weekly lineup, the way best ball works is your lineup is auto-optimized. So uh, the majority of players, that production evens out. When you apply this principle to best ball, you are taking your shot at blow-up potential in your draft. You are looking to find that 20% of players that make 80% of the difference in best ball leagues and who wins those leagues. You're looking for every week QB1s, RB1s, wide receiver ones, tight end ones. Those are the players you want to draft. Good example, we just did a redraft mock. Mike went with Golden Tate. Later in the round, Darius Slayton. If I'm in a best ball league, Darius Slayton represents that upside potential that Golden Tate certainly. doesn't yes. in a best ball yeah, certainly. F- format. You want the chance of a player separating. So when you're talking about best ball, you're talking about risk in general. You're looking at those difference makers. But the later your draft goes, the less risk averse you need to become take the sh- huge shots take the Jalen Rager or the Djax over the Alshon Jeffrey maybe he comes back and gives you the ho-hum performances take the shot in my opinion on a player like Anthony Miller who has unseen ceiling potential versus the ho-hum Tyler Boyd type of pick late in drafts so that's that's kind of the tip I wanted to bring to the table today Realize that the people who win at best ball, they do it on the backs of guys that are difference makers, have potential to be that breakout guy. It's really a good life tip, too. Oh, certainly. So, yeah, when I brought up using it in our company, we yeah. do not. That's, that's not a joke. That's, no. We run everything through the filter of the 80-20. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you have so many opportunities to do stuff. But we try to invest most of our time on the 20% of things that makes... That matter. Yeah, that yeah. matter. That makes the biggest di- difference in our business or in your life because, uh, I don't know, there's there's nothing quite like carving away all the needless crap in your life. Oh, yes. The golden tates of your everyday life. Oh! I know, that, is, that was rude. Low that, blow. That was rude. Golden Tate deserves your respect. He's just on the back end of his career. Darius Th- that's, that's fine. That's, yeah, no, it is fine. He's, Larry he's, Fitzgerald, I mean, he's he's a great player. Tons of respect. Not drafting him in best ball. Yeah, that's fair. You can, like I said, sign up for Underdog today, underdogfantasy.com, or search for the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store. We did it, guys. Our final mock draft in the books. DK Metcalf, Mike's signature player of this draft. Next week, the Fantasy MVP show, our bold prediction show. It's going to be hot. Stay tuned. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, make sure you join us tomorrow for the Sleeper Bowl live 1 p.m. Eastern 10 a.m. Pacific. We're drafting live against Juju Smith-Schuster, some other big names, and we're going to bring home that Foot Clan title once again.